Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. Hello, I am Lily. And the success or failure of this movie depends on how well I use this cardboard box. Colonel, I'm trying to sneak around, but I'm too dummy thick. Oh. And the makers of the movie... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I changed that one last minute, but you get what I mean. So yeah, um, welcome to From the Closet. Uh, today we are covering the 2000 X-Men movie. Um, obviously there will be spoilers for this movie. You will find a link below to Just Watch that will show you all of the places that you can purchase, rent, or stream this movie. Our links are centered, are, are focused for the U.S. However, if you use the Just Watch app, it will redirect you. And if you use the website, you will be able to change the country from the website page itself. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, I think that's most of what we got to say there. Um, okay, so next week, you can join us for our free movie of the month for September and Thor The Dark World. Ooh, it's a dark world out there. So this was a wheel movie, right? So we have to spin the wheel now. Yes, yes, we do. Um, give me a second. I have to actually open the wheel app that I use. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just um, excited because I really want to find out what's um, our next movie going to be. Oh, we have to record it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so um, we finally get another movie taken off of our list of movies that were on the wheel when we started. And? Soul. Oh. I like it. Yes. So, um, that episode will release on September 19th. September 19th. Huh. There we go. Not quite. So yes, um, definitely look forward to Soul. And yeah, I think with that out of the way, there will be spoilers going forward for this movie. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, um, what did you think of this movie? Because, like, this is a th this is a movie that neither one of us had seen until today. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really didn't like the um, the characters, like how they presented the characters' personalities. Yeah, I think that's one of the um, more positives about this. Yeah, and, like, they, um, they really, shit, uh, I didn't mean to bump that. Okay, they really did a good job at, uh, humanizing Magneto and making him seem, like, you know, kind of relatable. But then again, like, it's kind of then again, Magneto and Rogue are the only characters we got backstories for. Yeah, so Magneto... Very relatable. Uh, not okay. That's that's the wrong word to say. Um, very sympathetic. But you can also you can definitely see that he is he is evil and will remain evil. And there's there's a clear line of he must be stopped. But in a way, you can see the line of logic that he has gone himself into. Yeah. Just like with uh, Thanos, who. You know, we haven't encountered yet in this podcast. Who the um, hell is Thanos? I'm kidding, of course. But yeah, you know who Thanos is, even if you haven't seen Infinity War. But yeah, um, we decided we wanted to cover this franchise because the MCU is starting to bring in the X-Men franchise in... Like, the multiverse, somewhat. They haven't gone right out and explicitly confirmed that either timeline exists within the multiverse. 
but we can be fairly confident that they do because we've seen some of the same actors already. Hmm. Just for a second, I like how you were that, like, we have decided in actuality it was probably more like, hey, so I think we should cover the X-Men. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, we're going to be doing this series a lot slower than we are doing with the MCU. Um, unless they explicitly confirm uh, that X-Men takes place in one of the alternate universes. And if that happens and we get caught up on the MCU and it becomes necessary for us to finish this series to continue the MCU, then we will hurry up and finish the series. Yeah. But for now, we will take it slow. Just like we're doing with Spider-Man. No. Even though, like, Spider-Man stuff has been confirmed. We're just nowhere... Yeah, but it's also going to... Yeah, it's going to take us a while to get caught up. Yeah, we're nowhere near the point of covering Spider-Man No Way Home, so we don't really have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, I was fucking shocked to learn that David Hayter, the voice of Solid Snake, wrote, wrote, the, the, screenplay. Yeah, wrote the script for uh, the screenplay for this fucking movie. Like, Wow. Um, I mean, that's insane, really. It really is. Like, <laughs> just a fucking excuse me? David Hayter writes screenplays. It, like, after this podcast, I'm going to need to look uh, on his Wikipedia. Look into what else he has to do? Yeah, like looking into anything else he's done. Also, apparently, this movie was the first time Stan Lee had a cameo. Um... I huh. didn't catch it while watching, but Cinema Wins talked about it. So. I mean, we're not the series for it, but here's a win for Cinema Wins. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a. Uh, I, 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 back on what I was just saying, I have ADHD, so I go on tangents sometimes. But anyway, um, I love that. Uh, it, I love that David Hayter wrote the script, and I'm going to have to look into ev anything else he's done. I'm hoping he has a Wikipedia page, because that would make it easy. Avery, if we could change the name of the podcast, it would probably be Tangents, the podcast. <laughs> well, we can change the name of the podcast, but are we going we to? Won't. No. <laughs> hmm. That's a little bit concerning, but... What is? Oh, the, um, my volume is still being decreased, just decimal by decimal. Hmm, hopefully it won't be too much of an issue. Um, oh, and now it apparently can raise. Okay, so it, it's probably just I... fluctuating at a certain point. Yeah. I think it changes with the sound of my voice, so that could be... I mean, that's probably making my audio consistent. Yeah, alright, so the uh, th this movie does have some problematic elements because, like, it's comparing these mutants who have, like, extraordinary powers. Um, one of them who is the villain of this movie and you know, is very clearly, you know, kind of evil. It's comparing them to the Jews being persecuted by the Nazis. And that's not really a great comparison. The only comparison you can really make with that is that they're being killed because of the way that they were born. Yeah, but, like, nowhere near that, um... As bad, yeah. Yeah, and also, they're not defenseless. So, it's just, like... It, it, it's a not... It's a not great comparison. Um, and that's just something that this movie does. Um, it is a very gut-wrenching opening scene. I will give it that. Um... 
And like as a comic book fan, I immediately knew what I was looking at. I'm like, okay, this kid is Magneto. Um, Because I I see him controlling metal, and I'm like, yeah, that's textbook Magneto. Um, So this is obviously before um, I ever even knew about these characters, but I feel like I heard Magneto when you were talking about how, um, what was the series, what, Death Fights or whatever, where you're complaining about how Iron Man versus Magneto, well, no shit, Magneto would win. Okay, so it had nothing to do with, um, Death Battle. Oh. Yeah, I don't think Magneto has been in Death Battle. Um, even a single time. Storm has. Um, so then what am I thinking? I have talked about people suggesting stupid fights before. That's probably one of them. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, what I'd want to see is Magneto versus Pyrrha. Pyrrha is from Ruby, and she can also control metal. Um, but likely as not, Magneto would win that. But then again, Pyrrha does have Aura, which, you know, we'll get into Aura when we talk about Ruby. Um, which Eventually. Yeah, that will happen eventually. But, yeah. So, wh- Go ahead. What else to talk about the movie? Um, I guess I should um, elaborate on what I meant by these good characters, Wolverine, really consistent, um, you know, he's a guy with priorities, um, almost, you can kind of relate him a little bit to Deadpool when it comes to a little bit redundant, didn't really want to have anything with the X-Men at first. I mean, he mostly just kind of keeps to himself and wants to survive, Yeah, basically. Um, And and I feel like Deadpool was a completely different character. He was more like, yeah, I'm I'm not a hero. Um, He he was just he was a mercenary. Um, Yeah, there's there's a little bit of comparison, not a whole lot to. But there's just a few bits of um, connection here and there. Yeah. yeah, Wolverine really keeps to himself. He really doesn't bond much. Yeah, so like the bond between him and Rogue was a really, it, it was a really interesting character dynamic and it was really fun to see. Um, and that, and later out throughout the movie, he would only care about Rogue. Pretty much, yeah. And like, oh my god, that scene where like he accidentally kills her for for one he's accidentally killed a lot of characters in the comics um that he had really close bonds with so like that's very true to his character even if uh the blades coming directly out of his wrists is not comically accurate no what how are they coming out like, how does he have blades in the comics? I forget exactly how it is. I think it has... I think it's just something that he wears that the blades come out of. Like, I don't believe they are part of him. Huh. Well, being, if you really think about it, um, blades coming out of him is really disgusting. Um... But the movie handles it really well. Yeah. I mean, this is the same studio that made the Lightning Thief movie, so we really can't be too shocked that it's not comically accurate. I will never let Fox live that down. But yeah, um... I thought that was a pain to watch. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. and at some point we're going to cover Sea of Monsters. Just not now. But that day, it's not today. Yeah, it's it's also not tomorrow. 
good. But yeah, um, I wake up tomorrow, and I just wake up tomorrow. It's like, hey, we're covering the Lightning Thief uh, sequel because I feel like it. The, okay, bye. The Lightning Thief sequel says the person who's read the books and knows damn well what the name is. <laughs> Okay, I think you should know me long enough. I just randomly forget names. <laughs> but I do remember to see of monsters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, th this movie, it spawned a whole franchise of like X-Men films. That's it, It's kind of divided up in really weird ways. Because like, we have the original trilogy and the future, uh, the, the first class trilogy. Um but then there's also the X-Men original timeline, which this is a part of, and then the relaunched timeline, which will happen later, and we'll get to that. But and then you have Deadpool, who is just there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he, he's really confusing, um, especially since he gets his own method of time travel in Deadpool 2, and he goes about cleaning up the timelines. But yeah. Which um, basically if you watch Deadpool for the plot, um I wouldn't. <laughs> like it's wait, this isn't the part for Deadpool spoilers. But yeah, um this uh okay, so my experience with this series has been very limited. Um, prior to today, I have seen First Class, Days of Future Past, uh, Apocalypse, and Origins Wolverine. Those are the only movies in this series I have seen. Unless you count Deadpool and Deadpool 2 in this series, but I don't really. You know, we haven't really touched on like the movie that much, at least what really happens. So yeah, something, some other things I probably should say about this movie, special effects are great for the year 2000. Holy hell that it, it, it holds up very well. I love this scene where he's where Magneto is walking. You love and the path is being. Yeah. Did that get cut off? Well, it didn't get cut off in the recording. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, um... So... Um, I love when Magneto's walking and the path is being brought up to him. Oh, yeah, because, like, he's controlling the little metal tiles to create a path for him to walk. I love that moment. I love all the other moments where, like, in other pieces of media that happens... I think is like the coolest thing. Yeah. And then um the also the jail cell that he created that like literally only he can give access like only he can open and close. That was really a really cool idea. I also like he's not, you know, playing it up or down. It's like he's you know tear like ripping it apart. Yeah. Not not ripping. <laughs> that was uh, that was super cool. Bending, <laughs> like he's a, he's a metal bender. <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> fucking uh, fucking Avatar looking ass. <laughs> nah, he's Avatar before Avatar. If we're talking about Avatar looking ass, um, we have a the completely different Avatar looking ass. Yeah, because, like, this predates Avatar The Last Airbender, and also, to be fair, the comics version of Matt Magneto predates this movie by quite a while. Um, but you do... And obviously, uh, okay, no. so, not only is this movie not comically accurate, it's not accurate to what we saw in the X-Men cartoon that, you know, people going to see this movie were excited for. It still ended up being loved, uh, this franchise in general, ended up being very well loved um hmm. which is not that surprising because it still keeps the original messaging that Stan Lee intended for the X-Men uh cuz they're meant to be just a stand-in for any marginalized group 
Um, and there, it's meant to show like how you really, how you shouldn't judge people just because they are different. And it's, it's why I've like always been meaning to dig into the X-Men film series, even before the MCU started bringing it in. Um, I just never got around to it. Cause to be fair, it's like 14 or so movies. Well, now, uh, something is forcing us to, so yes, you have the chance. And, um, it'll be nice to get through this series. Um, but yeah, some people have tried painting Stan Lee as a bigot or a monster. And it's just like, I don't know, dude. He created the X-Men. He he was also very much all for LGBT representation in comics, even when the Comics Code Authority was strictly against it. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So sorry. The fuck is the nerdiest name sounding? Comic Code... Co the, I don't even remember the last word. But what the hell is that? They basically regulated comics. They decided what could, what was allowed and what was not allowed in comics, regardless of whether it was Marvel, DC, or anyone else. I'm sorry. What four eyes pencil pusher nerd is sitting there at their desk is like, hmm, LGBT, the gays. Sorry, but your comic book cannot be made. Burn it now. Yeah, it it's um it was a mess. Uh and there is actually some LGBT representation in the X-Men comics at least. I don't know about the movies, but we at least did have a uh, like in Deadpool 2, we saw Negasonic Teenage Warhead was by, so um that is still the longest name I've ever heard. At least for a superhero name. I'm trying to think of if I've heard of one that's longer. And I can't longer, think of one. Longer than Negasonic Teenage Warhead. But yeah, um, some other things. Okay, so another thing this movie changed, and I'm kind of glad they did, was that in the comics, Magneto's, like, group of mutants is called the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Huh. <laughs> and I feel like, um, you know, I haven't read the X-Men comics, but um, from my understanding, he's still supposed to be a very sympathetic character. So it's like... It, I could kind of understand if the angle was that, you know, he's trying to reclaim the word evil and like, you know, oh, people have called him evil, so therefore I'm going to own it. Hmm. Or just like, I'm going to name this, I I'm going to name my group this out of spite. I mean, what he's doing is definitely not good anyone can really see that this person the bad guy but to him he all he would also see himself as a necessary evil yeah and then like you know i like how cinema winds pointed out that um you know when he hears that his machine actually killed uh the senator senator kelly um he, it, it doesn't, like, he doesn't uh, believe that that's the truth. Um, and it's not that, it, it, I like that the movie just didn't make him say something like, I don't care. Because I don't think he truly would have, uh, I don't think the character of Mag Magneto would have truly been okay with wiping all of them out. No, his, that's not his goal. His goal was to make them... They want to be on equal footing. Yeah. And, like... The other thing, too, is, like... Um... 
the, the other thing about it is like I doubt you'd want to wipe out your supporters because clearly not everyone there was going to vote um, for a law that required all mutants to register. Um, a lot of yeah. Do you imagine the paperwork? <laughs> yeah. And you know, now I'm trying to remember. There was um, something that I read or watched not too long ago, um, mm. where somebody said a line of dialogue that was like. Am I the only person who has seen X-Men and knows that this is a bad idea? And it... <laughs> I don't know what that would be and what it's talking about, but that is funny. <laughs> yeah, like... I'm gonna have to look that up after the podcast, because it's, it, it's certainly something that I should be... Uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll probably bring it up in the next X-Men episode that we do, whenever that is. Good. But, yeah, it's a... <laughs> it, it's certainly something. Um, okay, so another thing with this movie, um, Rogue's powers, yeah, that's gotta suck um, for someone who is... Um, For someone who actually, you know, feels, um, it is actually like allosexual, alloromantic, that's gotta be awful. Yeah. And, um, um I, I also really appreciate too, like how she knows Wolverine's healing factor is a thing, so she steals his power for a bit. To heal when he accidentally stabs her. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's definitely some smart thinking. It's like, hey, I'm going to die. So can I just, like, borrow your power for a bit? Yoink. Okay, thanks. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I mean. Funny. It, I mean, to be fair. Go ahead. She was dying. <laughs> yeah, she was dying, and um, Mystique shows up, and he tells, and she tells her that like it, uh, Charles Xavier is mad at her, and um, that she should probably just leave, which obviously never happened. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I was watching that, and I was like what the hell is this guy doing? And then we find out that that was, we find out later that that was Mystique, and I'm like, oh, this makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I didn't fully know. Like, I obviously know this guy was talking out, talking out of his ass, but I didn't know what the reason was <laughs> until, obviously, it was revealed. Yeah, and it's like, you know... It, it's something you could probably guess, but I certainly didn't guess it. Um, I also, like, first saw that Charles would absolutely fall for whatever the fuck they did to his uh, machine thingy. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I don't, I don't know, it just seems like he wouldn't even think to uh, check it. He's not all-knowing. He can just read people's minds. If, yeah. If there's no one's mind to be read, he knows shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so what do you think of the character dynamic between Charles and Eric? Um... Who's Eric again? Magneto. Ah, uh, thank you for reminding me to bring this up, because I love the character dynamic. You're going to hate me, aren't yeah. you? You are. 
It reminds me of Kingdom Hearts. It's specifically in Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, that's all I'm going to say on this, because any expl any further explanation would probably bore you to sleep. <laughs> I mean, it is Kingdom Hearts, so I wouldn't be surprised if it does. <laughs> but if you know, you, I would hope you know um, what character dynamics I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's kind of... Uh... I'm trying to think of another character dynamic that is similar, because I'm sure there are plenty that I've seen that are similar. That, um... That, that it just, uh... I, I'm just trying to come up with one that this reminds me of. And I can't really think of one right now. Hmm. Especially them playing chess at the end. That's yeah. That's definitely reminiscent. Um, that definitely reminds me of um, Cam Hearts 3's opening. Yeah, and then, like, <laughs> it's a plastic jail cell. cell and I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you obviously can't do one made of metal because... I was honestly thinking, he's... at first I was like, Oh, more of an ironic or sarcastic um, sentence. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, no, wait, no, no, it'd have to be out of plastic or wood. Yeah. Like, um, Avatar The Last Airbender used a similar, it did a similar thing where um, there was that one episode where they imprisoned Toph in a wooden jail cell so that she couldn't metal bend out. Though, I mean, I think it'd be way more effective with plastic with Toph because, well, the Katara was also there and just water bended out. Do what, um, you think Katara wouldn't be able to bust through plastic with water bending? I mean, if, if it's thick enough, probably. Have you tried to cut plastic with water? No, but I also can't sharpen water. Wait, you, that's, that means you can't sharpen your water pencil. But, yeah, um, for one, I don't even think the society in Avatar The Last Airbender is capable of making plastic. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> and let's hope they don't figure out how to at any point, because that could be... It, plastic is really bad for the planet, and I imagine it'd be really bad for the planet in that universe, too. I'm sorry, would it, though? It wouldn't... You know, any plastic in the ocean would be easily, you know, picked up because of waterbenders. You know how much work that takes? And there's not really a good way to dispose of plastic, either. That's true. What if we just have fire benders, lava benders? Okay. What so if we just threw all of the plastic? To be fair, lava benders are earth benders, happen? not fire benders. Huh. But anyway, that's a separate series. Cool. Um. So yeah, regarding this movie, I think I really love the character dynamic between Eric and Charles Xavier. Um, I couldn't figure out who it was reminding me of, so I guess I'm going to kind of give up on that front. But yeah, it's like two old friends who, um, you know, they, it, it's very clear they both very much care about mutant kind, but they don't... Um, they have different ideals. They have different outlooks on humanity, on the Homo sapiens, if you will. Um, 
and both They're of just... their both of their perspectives are understandable. And yet, I kind of disagree with both of them. Hmm. I mean, really, they're just two um, friends in a heat lock of war. Yeah. And, like, of course, there's the obvious comparisons that people have made comparing um, uh, fucking uh, Charles Xavier to Martin Luther King Jr. and... Magneto to uh, Malcolm X. I have been thinking about that. Yeah, I'm. I actually could not remember the name of Malcolm X. I just remember learning about him in obviously school. Yeah, he was, I remember there was, he was another. Night. He was another uh, civil rights activist, but um, he was one of the, he was one of the more like win the fight by any means necessary. Whereas MLK was always like um, civil disobedience, peaceful protest, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And you can really see that in, you know, these two characters, Charles and Magneto. And it's also very clear, no. like, at the end that... Um, Charles Xavier is ready to throw down if it comes to that, but he doesn't believe it's necessary at this point in time. Yeah. Um, also, I just realized, why are we calling him Charles? Because his, his name is obviously Wheels. <laughs> Technically. We should, we should be calling him. Wheels is funny, but technically his, uh, uh, I, I don't know, his, technically his alias is, uh, Professor X. Yeah. I like, um, uh, Wheels better. Words. Words. Word, yo. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Nice. <laughs> but yeah um i i think I, I i really enjoyed this movie um i never i have never seen it before today um i think it holds up really well certainly holds up better than uh 2002 spider-man and it's not like that one has aged extremely poorly it just has some bad special effects and some reused uh that's only covered, shots. right? Yeah, it's yeah. mediocre. In terms of special effects, it. yeah, Just... it's still a really good movie. Oh yeah, which you can also hear how he rated that his feet. That's obviously out, right? Yeah. Yeah that uh, that one's been out. That one's been out for a while. That came out in July. I wouldn't call that a while. I would have called things that came out in. February a while. Okay, but like, that was beginning of July, and when we're recording this, it's like, end of August. At the very most, two months. Anyway. Um, there actually might be not much more we can say about this movie. What about you? Um, well, I'm not sure. Um, I'd be in, I think there are pitch meetings for this series. I'd be interested to start watching the pitch meetings as we go through mm -hmm. this series. Uh, obviously because Ryan George is fucking hilarious. Um, but yeah, I think other than that, there's not really too much to say. I love the characters. I love the story. The comparison to, you know, Jews in the Holocaust is a little problematic. Um, but it's some, I feel like that's something you can really ignore. I mean, it is, but it's something I want to consider for the rating. True. I mean, I'm going to consider it not that heavily, though.
Yeah, I think, uh, so with that being said, I'm, I'm going to just talk about what uh, critics rated this movie. Now, when I looked this movie up on Google, I only got two uh, actual critic ratings. So, I'm going to... I am on us. Yeah, so IMDb gives this a 7.3 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gives it 82%, and 83% of Google users like the movie. So, Lily, how do you feel? Um, I feel like a potato. But on this movie, um, I would say somewhere around 8.3. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so another thing I didn't mention earlier that just came to mind, um, I really appreciate how this movie... It carries a different tone than what we typically see with the MCU. Um, and I think that's largely largely due to the fact that the MCU is a comedy series. Whereas this franchise doesn't really go for comedy. Um, but I, I really appreciate... There are still comedic moments... There are some comedic moments, but it it doesn't try to have anywhere near as much comedy as what the MCU does. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think given all that, and given the fact, uh, given the problem that I mentioned earlier, um, I don't know, I think I'm going to give this movie 7.9. Okay. So yeah, um, I, I feel like that's a fair score to give it. Um, I'm rating it a little lower than Lily this time, but that it, it's primarily due to the the problematic nature of comparing the mutants to the Jews in Nazi Germany. Um, although, actually, it was Nazi-occupied Poland, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, with that being said, uh, you can join us next week for our free movie of the month, uh, and Thor The Dark World. Um, you can join us for Soul on the 19th. Um, and with all that being said, uh, I've been Avery, that's been Lily, and yeah, uh, we'll be seeing Colonel. you. Colonel! Colonel!